those who practice Satanism, the best way to describe it is if you were a bug lamp in an area with more bugs than usual, you're attracting more of them than you typically would. Now apply that with negative entities and a person. What up home slices and home fries and homes of other varieties. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about one major spiritual butt whooping lesson that I have learned, especially during my new growth spurt, if you will, if that makes sense. And the topic will be about Satanists. So guys, if you followed me from the very beginning, you know how I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent or made some videos about Satanists, my views about them, and yada yada yada. Well, I kind of wanted to make a new like refresher video talking about my stance, how I feel, because how I feel now is not the same as how I felt back then. And you know what? This channel is all about spiritual growth and learning and I thought, you know, it would be better just to get this out and I probably will unlist that previous videos about these things because, again, what I believe back then isn't necessarily how I feel right now and I don't know. I feel like it would be doing you guys a disservice of leaving it up, so I might just take it down in terms of unlisting it and at least that way I can go back watch it and I like being able to look at my progress too and I know some of you guys do as well so some videos will be left up some videos will be taken down and yeah I just wanted to go over this and I'm gonna be mostly reading off of the script I wrote it's not really a script it's more of like a letter or a note to myself just to make sure I cover everything I want to talk about and not go off on tangents and focus because you guys know I'm ADHD and I go off on my tangents and I don't want to do this because this is more of a more serious kind of video. And yeah, I just wanna make sure I have everything that I wanna say out because again, I learned a lot and I want to make sure that I go through this properly. The whole point of these videos is to document my spiritual journey and use the God-given gifts that I've received to help others. And that's that. And I don't want anyone to put me on a pedestal. I know some people get like really excited and you know they want to talk to me but they treat me like I'm higher than them. Don't do that, okay? I'm just your normal goofball documenting their spiritual growth journey, their experiences of the paranormal. Like, don't put me on a pedestal. We are equal, equal, okay? So that's another thing I wanted to point out. I am like y'all, okay? Some people can draw, some people can play sports really well, some people can see dead people, you know? It's, it is what it is. I mean, if you're gonna put anybody on a pedestal, put like Jesus on the pedestal, even though he'd get mad about that. But I'm just saying, I am not above anybody. I am just, again, your stereotypical goofball that sees dead people and helps others with paranormal, issues. That's it. Okay? Okay. And yeah, so we're going to begin here. In terms of spiritual growth, I took some time and I wanted to look back and do some reflecting. I do this a lot, actually. And I do this too with why I think the way I think, why I do certain actions. Like, I do a lot of this inner reflection type stuff 
on a regular basis and I got thinking I was like mm, I was going pretty hard back then on the Satanists and I then was thinking about well how do I feel now based off of the new stuff that I've learned how do I feel now about Satanists and yeah I do feel differently not gonna lie and creating these types of records is good to have it monitors my growth and I can go back on the videos and look to see where my ego and pride levels are because sometimes I'll get over passionate about certain topics and I gotta watch the ego level I gotta watch the pride level and make sure I'm not being a an asshole and B make sure that I'm not being too big for my britches and for those who point that out I mean it has been a while but for the friends and followers who will be like, hey, you know, you might be a little uh, up there right now, maybe dial it down a notch. I honestly am grateful for them, for everyone who points out those kinds of things. Because sometimes I just need a check. I need to check myself before I wreck myself. It is important and it keeps me at a nice level of sanity and groundedness and I don't ever want to make others feel that I'm better than them or that I'm going hard and lecturing and picking on people or certain groups when that's not how I am in my heart but sometimes my mouth <laughs> gets the better of me and sometimes my mouth just goes before my brain can catch up and so having people to be like hey um you might be going a little hard i'm grateful for all those people that do that so thank you <laughs> i'm i don't ever take offense to it in the moment i'll be like oh shit i fucked up i'm not trying to belittle or hurt anyone or put any negativity into the air and so yeah <laughs> again this in this video I just wanted to state that too because again growth we need that we're human we fuck up and I have no problem admitting that especially about myself because I'm not perfect and I fuck up a lot I will admit too in the beginning of my spiritual journey it was very difficult to admit my fuck ups I'm not gonna lie and why is that because my ego was still pretty pretty freaking high and I was like trying to I don't know put a name out for myself and I thought like if I was wrong or if people called me out for certain things like that would make me look more ridiculous or people wouldn't take me seriously because like I said I was in the beginning of my spiritual growth. I was trying to prove myself. And if I was wrong, that kind of like messed things up. But you know what? I feel like if a person is able to accept their mistakes and be able to learn from them, they're more of, or I should say they are better as a person that way. I don't know that's my opinion you guys can decide and I think it's even better to address it publicly because yeah it might help internally to be like yeah I fucked up but when I'm putting content out there if I don't address it publicly because I put the stuff out publicly it doesn't do anybody any good honestly it, it really doesn't but like I said the whole Satanist thing I went ham on them and I'm trying to right those wrongs and maybe add some more valuable information and to like back up some things not all because like I said my stance is uh different from back then it's important to note that back when I made these videos I again was on the beginning of my spiritual journey I was very prideful and egotistical and would pick on Satanists even though that was not my intention it came that way and 
yeah, so it looked like I was picking on Satanists and demon worshippers in the videos and the way I did it wasn't cool and the way I did it was more in a victim mentality and the reason behind that was because I was filled with so much anger and frustration due to the horrible things that were happening to me based off of the attacks I was receiving from negative entities. As you guys know, if you followed me for a while, I had my own haunting and it was very traumatic. And having Satanists and people who worship demons, like, do what they do and go about their lives and have their own videos and things. It made me frustrated because it was like, this bad shit is happening to me. How can you endorse such entities? But the thing is, I learned more about what Satanists, or I should say modern Satanists are about. And I feel like it's important to address that. Though... With that being said, I'll still spread my awareness of how certain negative entities are and the damage they can do. However, there are better ways to do that instead of doing what I had done previously. And the whole point of those other videos was to prevent people from experiencing the really traumatic things that I was experiencing. So deep down, the point was to help but like I said, the vibration that I was putting out at the time of those videos, not great, not good, not great. And I will say that those kinds of videos leaned more towards fear mongering. I'm not going to lie. Looking back at those videos that I made, mm, fear mongering. And I don't want to put that out into the world because the whole point is to get rid of the fear so they don't have something to feed off of, right? And two, it made me no better than some Christians out there. Not all Christians are the same, obviously. But the ones that would be like, if you do this, you're going to hell. If you do this, I don't know. God will never love you. Shit like that. I don't want to be like that. That's not me. And you can't stop fear and hate with more fear and hate. Durr. It's very counterintuitive. So again, the content that I want to put out, I want to do it with love and accepting and no judgment. So that's why, again, I want to get rid of some of those videos that project that out into the universe. So through this realization, I took time to think about Satanism and religions in other communities as a whole, why do people tend to gravitate towards one another in general? It is a thought that I had upon reflection. Or at least, what are some reasons? Some reasons. Humans in general are social creatures with the need for interaction. All we want to do or want is be accepted and love and to find our group of people that we can do that with. To share things we have in common with others to build bonds and relationships. Stuff like that. We just want to be loved. We just want to find our people who like the same things that we do and just we vibe with. While many would argue that the Satanism that's practiced today is different from what was practiced decades ago, I believe it's more complicated than that. I believe it has become more philosophical and less violent for sure. Obviously, people aren't nowadays just murdering people for sacrifices in the open and or, I don't know, there's less of that. Of course, you'll have some diehard Satanists that do those things, but nowadays it's not like that. And it is more accepted in the public eye. However, what trips me up are the low vibratory beings that are still associated with it. People will argue this, especially the modern Satanists, and it's okay. You can have your opinion, and this is my opinion. I feel like even though this is more rebranded to their newer ideas of acceptance and love and stuff like that, the entities are still the same from the old Satanism. They didn't go anywhere. 
But again, whether you believe me or not, that is your prerogative and I do not hold it against you. I can see them and I feel them. So this is all my perception. I can't be like, oh, you need to believe me. If you don't see it, it's kind of hard to believe it, right? So it is what it is. Those who practice Satanism, the modern one, darker occult practices, demon worship, etc., they all carry their own energy signature. When I come into contact with these specific energies without knowing, I don't even have to know about the person, whether they practice, whatever, it doesn't matter. I can feel the energy and I usually know what they are involved with, or at least the energies they're involved with. And so for me, from my perspective, it's harder. And I just know who does what in terms of energy and I can typically see a shadowy film over their body, sometimes over their entire body, their eyes or their face, but what I see and perceive energetically is what I perceive energetically and may be different from what others perceive energetically. I used to go solely by attachments, but I learned that everyone with attachments isn't necessarily involved in Satanism and vice versa. So you can have attachments regardless of what you practice or what you do doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. It's just that the entity that is attached to the person took advantage of the vulnerabilities of that person, period, point blank. So that is a spiritual whooping that I had to understand going into this. And even the most devout Christians, they'll argue with me with this. They can have their own attachments. They can have their own really fucked up attachments. But it, it is what it is. It just has to do with the vulnerabilities of the person, of their barriers, and what entities took advantage of that. I know some of them will say, oh, because I'm a devout Christian, I'm untouchable. Well, guess what? No one's untouchable. I'm not untouch untouchable. From time to time, I have my own attachments that I have to work through, point blank. And again, it's based off of traumas and the vulnerabilities that they use against you to attach. I'm no different, okay? Period. And you know, there are so many current situations. There's just so many factors to take into consideration. And again, at the end of the day, they are people. And by they, I mean Satanists. They are people too. Everyone is just looking for their place where they belong and they feel their full authentic selves. And no one should be trying to take that away from them. And this us versus them mentality is very toxic. Very toxic. And all it does is fuel more anger, frustration, and fear. And it's not bettering anybody. With that all being said, with more of an open mind and unbiased perspective, I took another look at Satanism and their seven fundamental tenets to feel the energy behind them and those who aim to follow them, including the initial intent. Upon analyzing the seven tenets, I realized there's a lot of trauma and judgment and hostility and anger, etc. in society that are pitting people against one another. As a whole, people are trying to find themselves while battling their own traumas and judgment and hostility and so on. If a person or a group of people go out of their way to provide a negative experience for another person or another group of people, what's going to happen? So the people facing the negativity are going to head in the opposite direction. So when you have certain groups of people saying, oh, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to go to hell and are just judgmental, what do you think is going to happen? I know what's going to happen because I had this mentality when I was a teenager. I am going to rebel. If you're going to tell me that, oh, you're going to hell because of this, this, and this, you worship the devil. Well, what I would have done back then is I would wear memorabilia that shows Satan to be like a fuck you or I would just do other things to say fuck you 
So if you tell me that I can't do certain things, I'm going to do those certain things and be very vocal about it and be like, fuck you, I'm going to do it anyway. So, duh. And obviously that's not the entire thought process behind Satanism in general, but there's a lot of people that go into it because of it. And I feel like nowadays with the younger generations, a lot of them just do things as a fuck you. They're not doing it because they're serious. Some are, absolutely. I would say overall, most people want to be accepted. They want to be loved. They want to find their group of people that have the same ideas and ideals as them. To seek safety is a basic animalistic and humanistic instinct. No one wants to continuously endure the stresses of opposition. Plus, it makes up the very foundation of the hierarchy of needs. Even in our chakra systems, there's chakras that regulate the feeling of acceptance. And if you compare the two charts, the placement and functions of each level are very similar to one another. Anyhow, the point I'm trying to make is people are naturally social creatures. Most need social interaction to remain mentally healthy, and many believe we have a pack mentality with the need of social structure. People are going to flock where they feel they belong and not be judged. As a result, smaller communities based on belief systems, hobbies, interests are formed. The seven tenets of today's modern version of Satanism are based off of ideas or ideals that many people strive for in a community or a society as a whole without having to worry about consequences of any kind. So, like I said, I have the tenants in front of me and I kind of wanted to go through them all here. So number one, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason. Most people want that. Number two, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. Number three, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. Number four, the freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend, to willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Again, this is like things that make obvious sense. Number five, belief should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's belief. Number six, people are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that might have been caused. Number seven, every tenant is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. Most of these things are things that society in general want. People just want safety. People just want peace overall. Think about it. Everybody has certain goals that they want to achieve. Both sides want to achieve those goals. However, the different ways, strategies to achieve those goals is what people be fighting over, like I said. At face value, many of these principles seem like a no-brainer, especially one, three through seven, even though number three can even become a little bit complicated, especially when it comes with the topic of abortion, which I will not like discuss that that's your own business number two is also complicated as well because it says justice should prevail over law this is dangerous in general because laws are created to maintain order structure and at times protect others but we all know there are laws that don't really protect others and can cause harm and a great example is like the death penalty or um, some of the laws going on in Texas when it comes to abortion, things like that. There are some things you question, but so I understand their train of thought, but you have to look at it from the perspective of 
we have laws in general to keep people safe. But like I said, the death penalty is a really good example because what if the person is actually innocent and they were wrongfully convicted? Who decides what's considered justice? Not everyone has the same definition of justice. Investigations are conducted in the attempt to scientifically prove someone's innocence or guilt regardless of the public perception. Perception is everything when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to just everything in general. The problem with these tenets isn't necessarily the tenets themselves, but the perceptions people hold when trying to uphold them. If justice is to prevail over law and institution, who then decides what is considered to be justice or justifiable consequences for an unliked or illegal action or activity? Not only that, what is considered to be unjust? Not every single person may agree to each of those terms. Tenant number three, again, with the whole one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. What about the terms of unwanted pregnancy due to one's own personal reasons? And I won't get into the personal reasons, but y'all can read between the lines. Depending on one's own perception of what a body is, certain developmental stages of a fetus can be considered a body. So if one has autonomy over their own body, what about the body of another within the body? So it's complicated, okay? I'm not trying to say what's right and wrong. I'm just trying to... S I don't know. I might be looking at this from the perspective a little bit of a lawyer. <laughs> um, if they had more information for each thing, maybe they do. I'm not a Satanist, so I'm not involved with their tenants and all the things in between, okay? So I just want to say that too. I just feel like with any law, um, tenant, stuff like that, there are many things in between the lines that are up for discussion. And to me, these tenants are trying to advertise freedom, compassion, justice, and scientific understanding to those who lack freedom, control of their lives, and love and compassion from others. That's why many people got sucked in, and it's understandable. Again, these guys, I feel, just want the same thing for the most part as everybody else. When you have certain members of society spewing all this hate, judgment, anger, and hostility towards other members of society who are trying to identify and explore their own identity, it puts them in search of a place that's accepting, and these tenants look pretty damn accepting. Obviously, I'm not saying I agree with all of these tenets or perspectives or narratives or Satanism in general. I'm just saying I understand. I feel the majority of people within this community just want to be loved and accepted for who they are as an individual, quirks and all, as they should. Yeah, and you know, they might even have a darker aesthetic and it doesn't... Fuck, I have a darker aesthetic. When I was in high school and even now, um, I like my goth and I like my dark clothes. I like the dark makeup. I love that shit. Obviously now I'm dressing more for comfort, but I love that shit. And some people do it for aesthetic reasons. Some people are just trying to find um, basic ideals and ideas that they have in common with others. This is pretty, you know, I feel like the tenants are very generic and basic. And, and I'm not trying to say that as like an insult. I'm just saying like, it covers things that most people would want living their lives. That's just how I feel. No one deserves to be treated like crap, obviously, for trying to express themselves in their unique way. With that being said, I feel like most people who claim to be Satanists or philosophical Satanists aren't even bad people by any means, though I never thought that to begin with. But I just wanted to refresh that thought. Honestly, many of them are agnostic or atheist 
who practice individualism and pick and choose what they like from it. So they're just essentially eclectic. Technically, if you think about it, society as a whole, especially the newer generations, are becoming more eclectic and individualistic, picking and choosing the beliefs they feel in line with in a more ego-driven way. If you think about it, today's society is more ego and individualistic driven. And so, and I feel like too, and it has to do with like the capitalism going on to today. Everyone wants the newest iPhone. Everyone wants the newest trends. They, and everyone care about what they look like or appear like to others. So it makes sense. While your modern Satanist most likely isn't outright working with Satan himself or other demonic entities, especially since they don't even believe in that stuff, my main concern again has to do with the entities from the old version of Satanism that that manipulate the vulnerable. No matter how it's rebranded, even if the followers are much different than the old ones, the entities don't care and are still the same. But like many things, there are many facets. Based off of what I've learned, a person isn't going to be immediately attacked by being a part of this group or Satanism, the modern Satanism. Do I think it increases the likelihood though of either having an attachment or a haunting or being drained energetically, etc.? Absolutely, I still believe that it does increase the risks through the law of invitation, especially if the person is very sensitive. Like, you have to remember that. This is the law of invitation. Those entities are still kind of associated with this. Number two, in terms of, like, other facets to think about, those with psychic abilities or higher psychic energy those who exhibit stronger abilities and or psychic energy have an increased rate of becoming food for negative energies. They become a lighthouse. However, being involved in Satanism is like shining a bug lamp inside an area with more bugs. Essentially, mental and physical illnesses, the more vulnerable, again, a person is, the easier it is to affect them. Essentially, when you are involved, and this doesn't even have to be Satanism. This this includes anybody who's in the occult, anybody who does any kind of paranormal work, whether it's like mediumship to help people or you're investigating haunted locations. When you put yourself in these types of energies, it increases the likelihood of being attacked, being an energy drain, having attachments, being haunted, etc. You're putting yourself in those energies. Whether you believe in those energies or not, they still exist and you're just a lighthouse or a beacon, a bug light, if you want to call it that, in a highly or more dense area of bugs. And long story short, being involved in these types of groups puts more negative eyes on you. My stance now when it comes to Satanism is it's not something I agree with or vibe with, but as long as they aren't hurting anyone, it's their business and their business alone, you do you boo. All I can do is educate from my perspective about energies and entities. It's up to the individual with what they want to do with the information I provide. And those who are Satanists and and are also involved with the occult, the only thing I can tell you is be careful and be mindful of the energies you are involved with, but also be aware that the energies aren't just affecting you. They affect everybody and everything around you. Just because you yourself or those dabbling in the same energies aren't experiencing or perceiving any issues doesn't mean that those around you are not having issues because they could be. Those who radiate at a different vibration experience different things, especially those like me who are very clairsentient. Well, that's just my perspective, and hopefully everyone got the gist of what I'm trying to say. Again, I've learned so much about spiritual matters, about entities, and how they work, and so I hope that this comes across 
more positively positive. I can't English today, seriously. But I don't feel the same way as I did. And I feel like now that I have more of an unbiased perspective and more, I don't know, I'm seeing things more from a higher perspective and so yeah I just I just wanted to relay this guys if you managed to stay through this entire video thank you so much for watching and I'll hope to see you soon again hopefully with another video this week I wanted to get a total of three since I bombed last week but it's getting harder because um, health wise mm, not great I am seeing doctors and specialists to help me get through certain things but it's just taken me longer to get content out and having to take more breaks than usual is kind of making it harder too but guys thanks again i'll see y'all soon peace out girl scout boy scout home slices and home fries <laughs>